Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs, Jim Dedman. Hope you enjoyed today's video that I put together for you. We're always doing something interesting here in the shop. Stick around, watch the video, enjoy, comment. Thank you. Excuse me, my wireless mic, <coughs> when I put it up, I forgot to charge it. So, Bozo struck the wireless mic. Uh, I got another little project I want to do today. And what it is, I have something to do with my storage. And basically, when I rearrange my, my storage, um, I tuck a, uh, you know, I have a floor jack and I keep it in a crack. So, to uh, give myself some more storage room, I take the handle off of it. So to put the handle back on, and here's the nut, by the way, um, I take and uh, this, you know, I take the nut and I screw it in out by hand. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take a bolt here, <coughs> and one I got in my junk, well not my junk, but my this collection of odd and bolts. It's not the right bolt, and I'm going to machine it into a thumb screw. To go on my jack so when I want to take my jack and move it I don't have to hunt a wrench I know and uh, I've got the jack out a good bit here lately usually I use it on a lawnmower I don't turn wrenches too much anymore so but in this is the I had a really good floor jacket it wore out over the years so <clears throat> we're just gonna I'll set up the knurl here and while I'm talking I'll just do it because it won't take but a darn New York minute get it going here while I'm talking. And, and you got the camera rolling. Let me get my other wrench right here. Let me find a cut hole in the can. Get my wrench squared away. Well, let's go as quick dirty little knurl on this nut. Do a little double boost machining here. I really like watching John over in the UK, England. He does a lot of stuff and a lot of things I see him do, just, you know, he just gets things at hand uh, and makes stuff. And it's just really great to watch. Anyway, too many folks, he's all the time doing little projects for friends and stuff. And too many of these channels, these folks get into making stuff and complicated things and, and <coughs> whatever. You know, a lot of times, like I've said, many times on my videos that uh, uh, like I've said many times on my videos that uh, this is my hobby I try to do things here that I need to do for myself. Maybe I'll be a friend to favor. I was talking to one of my classmates last night. We we're planning a reunion. And right there's a nut. So now I've got the nut part. Let me get situated and do the rest of it. Okay, well I'm just going to throw a quick center in it. Cut a lot of this 
all wants to get to it. But so let me get some stuff together now. Let you look over my shoulder for a different view here today. Uh, this is a half inch bolt. This has to be threaded all the way up. Well, this happens to need a little bit more moving room here. Eh? So. I tell you, this is not what you call a great setup. You, you notice I got my neural supported with some. I'm not going to take much off at a time because I'm not holding it very good. And basically, I'm going to turn as all this comes off. I know this bolt's way longer than what I need. I could have cut it off. A lot of things I could have done. Problem with it is, it's all going to be waste. And to be able to center it the way I need to center it, it actually works out better to center it the way I did. So, I'm using this VNMG tool, quite frankly, because I got to get up in the centers. Now, even though I'm using a small center, that's one of the drawbacks of the C's. You can't get up in there good. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to basically get the threads turned off to get it down to the size I'm going to need to thread it to make the other bolt. I'm going to check it after this one and see where I'm at. Okay, I've already turned it down now to the to the size for the threads. So now I've got to cut the little lip that goes in the end. Now, while we're at it, so. let me get something. I'll be right back. I set my work stop. This is just a little over a quarter of an inch right here. This has got to be. Oh. So. Let's turn this on down. Probably give it some more RPM too. Like I said, I know this all I'm going to use of it, and I'm just making sure that 230, so I've got 380, so i got a long way to go. You just can't take a lot off. All right, let me change and go up. A little more on RPM. So there we go. I'll bring you back and I'll get it turned down. All right, I'm going to feed it back across, check the size up close. About the right there. Check the size, see how close I am to what I want, and we'll. I need some. Huh? Well, we're going <coughs> to speed this up a bit. I don't need it to be all the way out, <coughs> quite obviously. And um, I 
and all the rest of that's waste. <coughs> so, still about ten more. Okay, <coughs> I'm taking thirty. I'm thinking 30 and I need about 20. <laughs> Pick this back, excuse me. Look at the hurry. We'll take that and cut it off at the bench or something. Come back and Okay, that's right on it. So all we gotta do now is thread it. Well, I'm, I'm gonna die, thread it, but I'm gonna take it to the bench and saw it off. With this being so thin, it's probably best to hand dye it in the vise. So I weigh two, but they ain't got much to hold on. And this soft jaw of this vise will protect the, the part. Instead of trying to put the die in the lathe, craftsman set there. This is a fairly new set, the way it's my newest set of craftsman. Uh, and this is probably 10 years old or 12. Uh, again, I needed, you know, I needed to get into metric and I didn't have any. So uh, it was just much easier to stick with the nose of the craftsman. Oh, I cross thread this thing. I'm going to run it in the back side of the die backwards to try to get it to screw there. But it's not more than I think I've got enough relief. It should work. So let me go ahead run this die back over back over the end and we'll just try it out. Because it just behooved me to do it that way and then we'll try it out and see if it's gonna work. See if we're successful with the the, the jack knob. This is something I've been looking at for a while and you know one of the ways I could have fixed this and Quite frankly, it would have been just as good a way is to get a boat, a metric boat, M11.15 boat, and machine it off that away. But uh, I decided to try something different just for S and G's. You can see that's the the bottom of the jack handle. I'm gonna reach down here and and take it out so it just slides out just like that and see what the little so it's down in there it's got a square you make sure it's engaged then you just take your thumb screw tighten it up so that's another little project off of the list let me uh cut you off and show you the reason exactly why i did it. okay as you heard me say many times I have length of space. You have to store stuff. A floor jacks is something to have handy at home. New multiple products. This particular one, it's a fairly inexpensive Norman. I've had several different kind of jacks over the years, but the last thing I had got somebody wanted to worse than I did, so I built them. I had a, a block off that I had for many years and failed. So, but you, see, this way I can take the handle out, put it back in its hole, and not have the handle in front of my workbench. The thumb screw is, you know, again, anything not to use a wrench. So, I hope you enjoyed my other quick and sturdy project. So, we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. This is Jim. This, by the way, I will remind you, this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Sawlogs Plastic Hubs for your personal enjoyment here on YouTube. 
The other thing I want to do is quickly thank everybody that's out here, that's visited my channel, that views, that comments. Our channel is growing thanks to you, and I will send you a sincere thanks. Thank you, and have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.